MuleSoft Composer is a declarative way to quickly and easily build flows that integrate systems and data and automate integration tasks. There are two main things you need to keep in mind when selecting MuleSoft Composer to solve your business problem. When you look at MuleSoft Composer from the front end, it's gonna look like any other managed package running inside a Salesforce org. But in fact, MuleSoft Composer runs on the MuleSoft cloud infrastructure, and it's just exposed in Salesforce via a thin UI layer, almost like an iframe inside a browser to allow builders to design Composer flows. Now, it's also important to keep in mind that Composer uses a container-based based infrastructure and leverages Kubernetes clusters. Now let's dive into the five things you should not do with MuleSoft Composer. Number one, don't make assumptions about data residency. So you should always be aware of where your data is being stored and processed. As of February 2023, all Composer resources are provisioned in the US or EU regions within AWS. So that means that even if the two systems you're connecting via a Composer connector store their data in a specific region, for example, Australia, Composer will run and process that data in a non-ANZ region like US East. Now, this might not be an issue, but it's something to keep in mind, especially if your project requires strict regional data residency outside the USA or the EU. Number two, don't forget that MuleSoft Composer runs outside of core Salesforce. So API calls can be consumed quicker than you might think, especially when you're using the Salesforce connector and large data volumes. So keep those API limits in mind when you're designing your Composer flows. If you trigger your Composer flow using a connection, there's one API call that's gonna be consumed per record. But if you trigger your flow using a schedule or records will be processed in a collection using a single API call. Number three, don't implement Composer without understanding how it manages state. Composer is built upon that container-based infrastructure, which is designed for a resilient and reliable execution of small, stateless operations. Now, if there's a failure, the underlying infrastructure, your pods and your apps are going to auto recover, but the failed process will not auto restart. So your transactions need to be rerun or re-triggered in order for your data to be processed. Number four, don't try to automate your Composer flow deployment with CI CD. It's not going to go well because Composer doesn't actually have a sandbox environment. As such, Composer flows are not supported in metadata deployments and their configuration cannot be managed in source. So you do want to, of course, manually configure your flow in the UI in your single production environment, but you wanna take advantage of Composer features like flow cloning, and of course, be sure to swap your connections from sandbox to production for your testing. Number five, don't forget to evaluate the latency that your business can tolerate as part of your system performance. When Composer manages events like a change to a record, it's not actually firing or listening to an event itself. It's polling the system in 15 second increments to pick up those changes. So you do wanna evaluate if the business truly, truly needs that real time integration or if they can deal with near real time, which is usually pretty good for most operations. Something pretty cool that's coming, Safe Harbor, is the ability to configure your own polling increments. Okay, so that's it, those are your five things not to do with MuleSoft Composer. A special shout out to Igor Andrasov who helped me compile this list. He's an expert on MuleSoft Composer here at Salesforce. If you like these what not to do countdowns, be sure to let me know in the comments and I hope to see you back here very soon.